Um, that is welcome. It's what he apparently. Welcome to <laughs> the Opera Show with Bimmy and Tools. It's going to be an exciting episode, so make sure you stick around. But, 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 make sure you subscribe and make sure you like. Yes. And forward it to your friends. Yes. This is this is a great episode. So yeah, your friends. Will yeah, appreciate it's a you for that. it's a really really packed episode. First of all, a big shout out to Barnomatics for making us uh, well lubricated. Ew. This episode. What? Why did I want to just cross my legs? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> get your mind out of I the gutter. Like... Now, we have a lot to cover, so let's get to it, okay? And when he's wearing a short dress, ew. <laughs> uh, first off, uh, sad news. Sad, yeah. sad news about Virgil Abloh. Um, he was the creative director for um, Louis Vuitton, and also um, he was, was he was also the creative director for Off White, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, he unfortunately passed away. Um, he had cancer; had been battling it privately for a few years. And I read the news and I screamed. He was only forty one. He was only forty one, still very very young. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I was thinking that you know when he he accepted the job at Louis Vuitton, did he already have cancer then? We don't know, and we will never know. I I just think it's really sad because I remember how excited people like yeah. Naomi were for him. Africans. I remember when you know she posted and she wrote this long thing, and I was like, oh, that's. I think that was probably my first time of hearing about him, and I yeah. went to do some research to know more. May his soul rest in peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very sad. Um, I'm not. I'm not the world's number one fashionista, but I can definitely appreciate how important. Um, his voice, his story was um, for especially young, young um, African, you know, fashion designers. Representation matters. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Uh, may he rest in peace. And cancer sucks. Mm. It does. It does. All right, so let's get into um, this week's episode. Uh, we have got a special. We've got two guests actually. Yes, it's a packed episode. Like yes, I said. so it is. It is. So get your snacks and drinks, and hopefully you have a drink from Biomatics. Um, and okay, so let's start. Um, we haven't been really good with reading fan mail because we've just had so much to talk about. So we're going to read two. There's one that I got, um, <laughs> very funny. So this, I, I read it and then I couldn't find it anymore. So I, I don't know if you wanted us to so mention just your name. So summarize it. So this lady says, she sends me a message saying that she's been talking to this guy for about two to three months. And he then said that he was traveling, mm-hmm. um, to the abroad to do his masters. Mm -hmm. And she said that, um, so he told her that and she said that that apparently the day that he was supposed to be traveling, she now saw from, um, different friends, like WhatsApp stories and everything that it was actually his wedding day. Uh, Well, (laughs) masters in marriage studies. (laughs) So it was actually his wedding day. And then she said that she tried to contact him, but he has since blocked her. And she's like, she doesn't know what to do next. And I'm like, um, I, what's he, what's he blocking now? One, um, you already, I mean, you should have closure. He lied. I mean, and good you. redance to bad rubbish. That means he doesn't want to contact you. I mean, it's harsh. He doesn't it's, want you, you to know, contact him. Baby, it's okay. Just move on. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just, what do you want? She said she doesn't know what to do. What do, you, what do you want to do? If a guy blocks me, that's, there was somebody I was dating that blocked me. And I was just like, I was. I While was, you were dating? So we actually, we, we just started talking and then something happened. And I was so confused. I was like, maybe there's... I was checking. I was like, my something's wrong with my phone because I did not believe it. <laughs> then like, it took me. It took me a whole day. It took me a whole day to actually realize that this guy blocked me. <laughs> and after when I actually realized, I didn't even try to call. I didn't, you know. And I was like, well, I thought he died. I thought he died. I was like, maybe he he died and his phone died too. <laughs> I don't know. But um, when I realized then that he'd actually blocked me, I was like, don't, 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 don't. And yeah, then he came back nothing to, to have know, a nothing. He came back to do what? He came back to now apologize 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 why did he say to apologize uh oh he sent people anyway because that's a different story if you block me you know there are ways to went to block someone that has blocked you mm. so we will never speak again i don't think i blocked him back because i was I, no, like, no this is somebody that especially somebody that you know so if we see in person you'd cease to exist mm-hmm. and i know how to do that thing very well so like i just literally yeah. even if you're sitting opposite me i would look through you i would speak through you um, you start to think maybe you are invisible. <laughs> if somebody blocks you, that's that's closure. <laughs> I mean, what else do you need? Do <laughs> um, 
Um, so, but isn't there this this joke, this joke that I've seen one or two people put up there? Um, they said that make sure you video call your Nigerian boyfriend every Saturday to ah. make sure he's not getting married. But even if you video call him, you tell that he's doing music video or he's acting <laughs> film. So, mm. I remember I did an interview with oh, Casey. Oh, oh, oh. We had pictures from his wedding. He said it was a music video. Okay. And I was like, the way he insists, you know when somebody is just insisting, you're just like, maybe, maybe, maybe it is a music video. I'm so confused. But that might not work because the guy can just go to the bathroom and be like, hey, babe, I'm just, you know, I'm just at a birthday party. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then the next thing, they're doing the singing and they're bringing the bright in and everything. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> so, <laughs> Nigerian men, why? Why are you <laughs> like this? Why? Yeah. What's the second fan meal? Um, The second one. So, are we mentioning, are we, are we, are, am I saying everything? Are, are we? Are we yeah. naming and shaming? Is it a safe okay. place? It's a safe place, a safe place. to name and shame. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, I got another message mm. from um, a lady that said that um, some single women were apparently not let into crossroads mm-hmm. uh, but because they were unaccompanied mm. you know and i just i'm like this is 2021 this was happening like a few years ago i didn't know that it hadn't stopped almost 2022 in fact it happened to me i was trying to a friend of mine she doesn't live here but when she comes she likes pepper soup she likes you know the nigerian food and she was insisting that we should go to sailors and um, i said mm. She said, let's just go. We went and then the bouncer was polite. He said, sorry, we can't let you in because you're unaccompanied by a guy. And we're like, huh? We just, she just wanted to have pepper soup. And I was looking at her like, you see now, you see? Mm-hmm. No, I mean, and it's, it's not just these places, but there's so many places. But I, I, at some point, I tried to get into Crossroads one day, a couple of years ago. My friends, it was my friend's birthday. I went straight from work and they were like, no, you can't enter. So I had to call her and then she had to come with a guy to get me in. And I think it's just ridiculous. Some of these establishments argue that um, what happens is that a lot of the single women that come in, one, don't uh, buy anything. And two, some of them are coming to solicit for customers. So what about you tell your customers not to then accept the business they're not it's not like they're going to bash them over the head and collect money or whatever so how about you tell your guys if these girls approach you then ignore and if if business is not booming they won't come again now or whatever but i just think it really is ridiculous and it is so sexist misogynistic ridiculous that in almost 2022 we're still dealing with nonsense like this it's shocking it's shocking if you're saying that you know certain people aren't buying things how about you have like a minimum spend or something like if you're gonna have it if you're gonna you know take a table have like a minimum spend but what i don't understand it it's 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 i mean it hasn't has it happened to, it hasn't happened to me it hasn't happened to me before um but i think i would probably just maybe pass out if it did because i'd be so shocked like you're saying that i cannot enter because i'm i don't have a man by me mm-hmm. i'm like do you know how much is in this card Fifty thousand at least but anyways um <laughs> but anyways anyways yeah you know what let's let's be honest um these establishments you need to do better mm-hmm. like bimmy said if you're worried about you know um your customers being solicited you cannot by force solicit somebody it can't be by force so how about you tell your customers like you know what don't do that in here and you know you can't stop women from coming in just because because it doesn't even make sense because what if they what if like okay you're saying you don't want prostitutes and everything what if like they come in with a pimp i have a question though what about male prostitutes Mm -hmm. because they do exist yeah they do they do they do they do it just is this is 2021 this is unacceptable behavior mm-hmm. you need to fix it you need to sort yourselves out mm-hmm. i think it's really really it's really embarrassing I, I i would probably be extremely embarrassed and i would never go to that establishment again and i would tell everybody i know not to go to that establishment ever again i so remember the up. sailors reached out to me because i tweeted about it and it became news and everything and blogs carried it and they reached out to me and they were like oh they're so sorry oh me and my friend can come back and i'll build i was just like nope not interested thank you so and i've not been there since it's okay and i know it's in their purpose soup since i'd not die <laughs> okay let us move on um our first guest is um a fantastic uh man called Kende Baramosi mm-hmm. um and if you follow us on twitter you'll know that we did put a flyer out there um and basically we're going to be talking about why gay men marry straight women um it's something that we've touched on a few times mm-hmm. on the show i mean i know one or two people that have been in that situation mm-hmm. um so we're going to be asking him tons and tons of questions mm-hmm. so make sure you keep watching all right so we're gonna um uh, get started and how this conversation even came about was because of something that i think you posted or tweeted like a, a few days ago 
and we were like okay we need to talk to him and right. find out why um gay men sometimes marry straight women <laughs> i that's uh... <laughs> That's uh, quite, uh, yeah, I, I wasn't expecting that I was going to answer quickly. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, I, I run um, kind of a weekly kind of series where I talk about love relationships okay. on Instagram. And my audience usually uh, mostly gay men. Okay. And also members of the LGBTQ community and a lot of straight women also, I mean, they come there. But basically I'm just talking about where do you find happiness um, I am a student of happiness. Um, happiness is such a vague conversation over the years. Um, so many researchers have tried to uh, find out what makes people happy. Is it true relationships or not? So my focus has been on relationship because I've been there. And uh, so last week, I think it was a week ago or two weeks. Uh, so I was just talking randomly about my relationship um, that I was married to a woman. And, um, and that knowing that the most other men, a lot of men, not everyone, uh, have been through some of such pressure uh, from family or from the society to get married to women. Uh, unfortunately, uh, and most of these women don't know, uh, or some of these women know, uh, but they don't know how to confront um, uh, their spouses about the situation. Anyway, that was what I was discussing and I posted that on Instagram. It wasn't something that was supposed to be a big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, I had told my story in 2015. Uh, and that was, um, so I, I wasn't expecting it to kind of uh, have a blow back, you know, kind of effect where everybody was <laughs> getting to know about this. And I was like, no, I'm not the only one who has told this story. So many people have told this story. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's what happened on Instagram. And that's how we got here. How long did you date your ex-wife for? before you guys eventually decided to uh, get married? Um, it, it was a very interesting um, kind of um, relationship because we met um, while we were serving in, in NYC. For those of you listening, uh, if you know NYC, Nigerian Youth Service Call, uh, it's very important service that you do after your uh, college, I mean, university. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we met while they were both Christian, and we were both part of the Christian fellowship. I'm sure there's still Nigerian Christian Corpus fellowship. Absolutely. Uh, that was where we met. And, okay. And <laughs> yeah. And, and um, I mean, we were part of the choir, we we're part of their uh, leadership. Uh, I, for, for your information, I used to be uh, leaders, uh, a leader in the church. So I, I've, been, um, I've been part of church movement for a long time from, from the Deep Allied movement to, to the first square movement to going to um, Fountain of Life uh, oh. Church. Uh, so when I went to the to the North to serve, um, uh, I was lucky to to serve from the Nigerian Christian Corpus Fellowship, and my ex-wife also was was there. So she was in the choir. So we met there. That was where we met. Um, so when you when you met your ex-wife and you started dating, you were very very clear, and you you knew one hundred percent that you were gay then. Okay, so for, the, for, for many people who are aware about um, the dilemma with being gay in Nigeria, mm -hmm. uh, for many of us, and I mean, some of us grew up in the time when there was no internet. <laughs> so yes. I remember that we used to go to the library. I would go to the library in, in OAU and just spend a lot of time in the psychology department because I used to think I was sick, you know, like something was wrong with me. Like, mm -hmm. um, you know, I would wake up in the morning and I had girlfriends, you know, but I would just feel that there was something not really complete. And so um, I would go to the psychology uh, section of the library and I would read all the books about, you know, sexual identity, sexual uh, relationship and what have you. Uh, and, you know, all those time as a Christian, you know what I was doing? I was just uh, binding the devil that this is the devil. This, is, this has to go out. So I was going through a lot of, you know, uh, kind of spiritual reckoning, trying to overcome what if, if you may, a kind of a demon, we call it, you know, this is not of God, you know, mm -hmm. God wanted a man to be with a woman. And so that was what I believed. So when I met my, my ex-wife, I remember the first thing I told her was that I had a struggle and um, I, I am more attracted to men than women. And so because she also was a Christian, like myself, who believe in the Holy Ghost power <laughs> to, to make miracles happen. So she just said, no, I mean, forget about that. God can heal you. 
but and I'm sure she had a good intention because I've I've read a lot of things online from many women accusing her uh, for trying to to change me. I think a lot of women actually do that to today. Uh, they just believe they can change a man or they can they can convert people from their sexuality. And I'm talking about we're talking about you know far back before Facebook, so uh, we didn't have so much exposure. Uh, all we had then was just prayer, Bible. And remember, it was in the heydays of uh, Pastor Bimbo Ducoya's Singles and Married, if most of you are listening know about then. Uh, that was a popular radio show. And most of us, we grew up in those times where you believe that, you know, you can be God and God can make whatever you want to happen, happen. So she, um, she believed that she could actually work the journey with me and we could actually get, I could get, you know, I could become fully straight. Uh, I had no problem uh, to be with a woman. I had no problem being attracted, if you like, but I had a problem of, you know, being, uh, seeing myself in love with a woman. And that is what differentiates a gay man from a straight man. Uh, because I've also seen on the internet <laughs> where people talk about, you know, you want to sleep with a woman, uh, you want to sleep with a man. No, it's not the sexual part. It's, uh, a lot of gay men can sleep with women. They can actually have sex with women. It doesn't take much uh, to do that. Uh, it is more about emotional connection, who you are connected right. with. Uh, I wasn't, I've never been connected to a woman all my life. And I'd always thought that, okay, maybe something was wrong. And she believed too that something was wrong. And so she went along with me in that journey. And uh, both of us, you know, were just praying. I remember we used to do a lot of fasting. Um, you know, I belong to, I used to be part of the Exodus International. Uh, you, could, you can Google that. Uh, Exodus International uh, was one of the biggest game of, ex game movement in America. Uh, they were trying to convert people who were gay to being straight, you know, and they were also Pentecostal. So it was something beautiful for me to, to be part of at that time. I would send money, to, you know, I would send my, you know, what you call the seed fate. And I will watch the TBN, uh, the Christian Broadcasting Network, uh, the Paula White of this world, uh, the TD Jakes of this world, Woman Thou at Loose. I can mention all the things some of us went through, you know, as gay men. And all I just wanted was God, you know, we would use the word, uh, this tongue in my flesh. You remember that in the Bible, Paul was talking about God said there is a tongue, you know, God can remove this, this tongue in your flesh. And I would be praying, you know, that God should remove that. Anyway, um, I was always delaying um, proposing to her because I wasn't sure that anything had changed <laughs> about my desire to be with a man while we were dating. But she believed that, that, you know, after all, something must have changed. God cannot lie. God must have changed you. And so she was the one who proposed marriage, not me. Um, wow. it, was, it, was in, it was in February the 14th, Valentine's Day. Uh, I was, we, we've left the youth service. I, I was um, in advertising agency. And um, I remember that day I got a, a phone call. Uh, it was also before the mobile phone uh, mm -hmm. here. <laughs> so I got a phone call from the receptionist and then they passed the phone to me and it was my, you know, I would call my girlfriend that time. And she said, today's uh, February 14. Uh, I, I think we, I, I want you to know that I love you and I think we can be together and all of that. I said, are you serious? Do you think we can make this happen? And she said, yes. And hey, I mean, who, who was I not to believe in God? You know, uh, there's a part of me that believed that you could push back. But there's also a part of me that felt I should carry it along because I was a pastor in a way. Uh, I was also one of the people who was preaching the gospel for people to believe. And mm -hmm. so, um, <laughs> so the next thing was we went through counseling. Um, and we, I told the pastor, I, I spoke to the pastor. So this is, this is funny for most people who told that, oh, he hid this away from her. No, everybody was in the know. Uh, I spoke with the pastor, uh, mm -hmm. who was my leader and uh, the leadership. Uh, I still remember very well. One of the things she said, I can never forget, uh, to today. Uh, she looked straight in her eye and told her and said, this guy, I told you that he, uh, prefers to be with, with men. And you still insist that you, you want to go along this journey. He doesn't really, you know, he's trying to commit, you know, to being a straight man. Uh, don't in the future forget, don't in the future forget that this happened, that you, you, made, you wanted this guy to come along in this journey. If something happened in the future, don't ever blame him. 
uh, for this because you want this too. And this guy is car is coming along with you. Oh, and so I she remember was she told my pastor. Like, you know, she was one. Yeah, uh, this was a this was a moment for me that it was so surreal, uh, especially remembering the words of my pastor today. And she was very stern. She I didn't want to mention names, and she was really very stern to say, uh, "You should let this guy just be uh, instead of you, you know, wanting this marriage." And mm -hmm. I just like, okay, um, let's do this because, of course, remember in Nigeria, uh, I was twenty eight. Uh, most families were already asking. Uh, where's wife? Uh, you have a good job. You've left NYSE. You have, uh, you just, you know, everything it's is looking job. good for you. Uh, where's wife? And, and here was a woman who believes in you, who believes that everything can be all right. And also she knows everything about me. She, she knew everything about me. There was no secret. So I just felt maybe God sent her after all. <laughs> maybe, maybe she was an angel that God sent to me so that I could really get, you know, to become straight. So, Maybe we could do this. So that's that's how we got married. I I this is this is I have a million and one questions already in my head. Um, now your story is a bit different from. Um, I mean, this is we we live in Lagos. Um, you hear about it quite often, but the difference between your story and the stories that we hear is that you were honest. You were honest from the very beginning. Uh, you, you basically said, look, I have, you know, this situation or I have something that I'm dealing with. Um, what are your thoughts on men that know they're gay, that have had, um, you know, relationships with other gay men and they still pursue women because they feel, you know what, I'm living in Lagos, number one. Or Nigeria it's, in general. You, you know, I'm living in Nigeria. Thank you. Um, it's it's still, quote unquote, illegal. Um, and, you know, I have family pressures and everything. And then they end up, you know, um, finding finding somebody to, to, I guess, fall in love with them. They get married and everything. And then much later on, she starts you know, seeing a different side or something. So what are your thoughts on people that are not honest? Uh, I mean, the word honest can be a little vague, honestly, uh, knowing that life is a journey, uh, is a journey for most of us. Um, uh, some people are bisexual, let's not forget. Some people yes. actually, they have, they have feelings for both women and men, same with, with women. Um, and so some people are in this spectrum what we call the sexuality spectrum, where they are still finding out who they are. Like I was, to be honest. It's just that I was honest with her that this was a journey I was going through uh, at that time. So because of the shame that we've attached to sexuality in a society like ours, um, there is a lot of shaming of sexuality, like being gay, like being uh, lesbian, um, they, until we remove this shaming. Uh, people will not usually want to come, you know, uh, complain uh, to whoever they are dating. I mean, there is nothing wrong for you to tell your partner, you know, I also love women. If, you, if you're a man or if you're a woman to say, I also love women like myself. Um, mm -hmm. So vice versa. Uh, but so I, I always find it hard to use the word honest because maybe some of the men you are referring to actually are going through that kind of a journey at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also agree with you. There are some who actually know very well who they are. Uh, they have come, you know, they reckon that they are gay. And uh, I mean, they are the same, you know, same sex kind of attract. They are, they, I mean, they, they love, you know, men like themselves, but mm -hmm. because of the pressure, they just feel they can just pretend. Uh, and that for me, I just personally, this is me talking personally. So this is my personal opinion. I believe that every woman deserves to be treated right. I believe that it is unfair for you not to tell your wife or your, your fiancé or whoever how you feel sexually, your sexual journey. I believe also that a woman should do the same to the man. Um, if you're a lesbian woman uh, or you're a bisexual woman, it's the same way. You should be able to say, uh, this, is, this is my journey. This is where I am. And I think truth, then that is when I can talk about honesty. Uh, I think it takes both, both sides of the equation. When did you realize that you couldn't continue with the marriage? Was it your decision? Was it her decision? Or was it mutual? It was mutual. I mean, um, I, I can't blame her for, for wanting to get married. And I, looking back at who I was as a young man at 28, I also can't blame myself for wanting to get married. Um, I thought it was something very traditional thing to do. Uh, um, even though we, we've been through counseling. And I remember through counseling, 
uh, and this is, I mean, most people know that I don't, I don't like a lot of church anymore, <laughs> but I still speak very well about my church relationship with my pastor at that time. I mean, I don't have a good relationship with them as I speak, but now I can still tell anyone listening that they did very well. They still ask this question over and over again, why we were going through counseling. They ask her and ask me and ask her again, especially herself. Uh, that's, you know, you know this guy, you know what he's going through. Uh, you still want to hear with this marriage. And she always repeated, God has spoken to me. I know what God told me. This is the word of God to me. That this is my husband and we're going to get married, you know. So she was this firebrand um, believer at that time. And so everything, nobody can tell her otherwise. So, so I would say, yes, we, we got married just based on faith that, you know, things might change uh, as we move on. How long were you married for? We were married for five years. Um, did the topic of children ever come up? And of course, this... we, we had sex. So... <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I mean... no one asked for any. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is this is a part where it got really very emotional for both of us. Okay. Um, this was a woman who came into marriage because she wanted to save a man who possibly she thought was going to hell and God needed to help him. And uh, this was a man who came into marriage because he believed also that he could be saved and God can change, you know, because God said there is nothing impossible. Mm -hmm. And so these two people came together, <laughs> two nice people, if you like. She is actually better than I am. She's a nicer person. Uh, they came together and then they continued this relationship. Sex was good. Every, if you look from outside, you know, over time, guess what, what happened? She has herself, she had endometriosis. Mm -hmm. And because of that, she couldn't get pregnant. Okay. In fact, the first time she did get pregnant, she lost a baby uh, because of uh, because of the the medical condition. I'm so and sorry. So for the first time, yes, thank you, guys, uh, thank you for saying that. Um, but for the first time, the pressure of getting married now changed to another pressure. Guess what the pressure was? Having a baby. Yeah. So Never... this, and I'm speaking to my friends that are listening. We put so much pressure on people. Uh, we put pressure on people to get married. People get married. The next thing is, where is the baby? Where is Junior? And I remember my ex-wife, you know, spent most of her life uh, at that time of her devotion, everything, uh, looking for baby. Um, and I remember that, you know, I was I was earning incredibly okay. I was doing very well. I was earning very well, as a matter of fact. And so all my income was spent on IVF uh, because every time, you know, she she couldn't just. The baby couldn't stay in a womb. It just it wasn't just possible for her to do. And so what happened? We now move to the third stage. Remember the first stage? Getting married, the pressure from family, everything. And she, she got through that. The second stage was getting a baby. And when that wasn't happening, she now turned to me. She now became my enemy number one. And then she was now beginning to suggest, to say, could it be because you were gay that God is punishing us? that we're not having a baby. Mm. And that was the moment for me. That was the moment of reckoning for me. That was the time I, I stood up and I said, I think it's about time we address the elephant in the room. Um, mm. This marriage has not been based on honesty. Uh, it's been based on one-sided honesty. Uh, both of us needed to look at this very well. Okay, let me break it to you. I have discovered over the years, over the four years at that time that we were together, that I, my, my attraction for men had not changed. As a matter of fact, I prefer to go away and be with a man than to be with you. And then she became really upset. She was, you know, and then she went to report to the church. You know, most women in Nigeria, when they fight with their husband, the first thing they go to the pastor. Mm -hmm. um, she went to report to, to the church and because she thought that the solution was going to come from there. But mm -hmm. unfortunately for her, I was also talking to the pastor. Uh, I still have an email that I sent to my pastor in Nigeria. Uh, if you want a copy of it, possibly I could send to you if you want to share with the viewers. We're nosy, so yes, please. <laughs> I sent an email to my pastor and I told my pastor that 
Um, I'm sorry to disappoint you because this was a very good man. He, he, my pastor was a very good man. And I said, I know you have really tried to make sure that, you know, I had a change, you know, uh, uh, what you call a transformation. I said, but over the years, I've realized that I am actually gay. You know what? I, I want to stop fighting this because it, it was beginning to affect everything about me. It was affecting my mental health, everything. And mm -hmm. so I needed to be honest with who I was. I said, and I know that because I was a deacon in the church, I don't think this is going to be good on you as a, as a bishop, as a pastor. So mm -hmm. I was ready to step down and stop coming to, to your church or stop being in the leadership mm -hmm. and all of that. And it was exactly that same time that my wife was talking to them. My wife was telling them that, you know, Kenny needed to repent. Kenny needed to, to give his life to Jesus again. And so that was the, the time we now really started fighting. Uh, okay. For the first time, I now had to put my feet down and say, look, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. You knew who I was. I have tried for four years to actually be the straight guy. But the truth is that this is not working. And this issue of getting, having a baby and all of that is beginning to affect you because now you go to church, all you look at is other women who married at the same time with you who have babies. And now you don't want to talk about your, uh, the medical situation. Now all, all you talk about is a sexuality situation. So I think it's about time this all stopped. And I had to face it. I had to say I was ready to, to just leave everything. And that was the beginning of the end for us. How did your family take it, for instance? I imagine that you had to break the news to them that you and your ex-wife will no longer be together. And did you tell them the reason why? Or you just said, look, it's not working out? No. Um, if there's any gift uh, that I think I have had over the years is the gift of being honest. Um, I don't, I, even using the word being honest is a little too kind of arrogant to my side. I would say, it's, I just like to be truthful to who I am. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm flawed. I'm, I'm, I'm a flawed person. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but if there's anything I learned from my father and from people who raised me is that a real, a real man is somebody who tells, who is honest with himself or, or a real woman is person who's honest with herself. And so I was able to, to talk to my family. I was able to talk to my brother and to, and I said, this is what's happening. But you know, the way Nigerian families are, the first thing they would tell you is, you know, we we have heard you, but this is not the story we want to put out there. We, okay. This cannot happen. People, we cannot tell people you are gay. It's, it's not possible. And don't mind you, that, I mean, mind you, this was at the height of Nigerian same-sex marriage uh, law that was being uh, promulgated by the, the president, Jonathan. Mm -hmm. uh, where they were going to jail people uh, mm -hmm. for being gay. So some of my family members, they needed to protect me and said, this cannot be out. You cannot say this. Uh, but unfortunately for us, um, she had gone out. She had started talking to everybody. Uh, mm -hmm. So it started with um, people in advertising uh, industry in Nigeria. Uh, people started calling me. A few people were honest to say, oh, your wife told us that you are now a gay man. I said, I have always been gay. <laughs> I, so, I didn't just become a gay person. So, people were so coming she to outed ask you. you. <laughs> she outed you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, she did. She did. Um, in fact, uh, I wrote about this about a few days ago. Um, my biggest client in Nigeria was also NYC. I used to train the National Youth Service Corps how to, mm -hmm. you know, I'm an idea person. I'm a creative. I used to teach, you know, creativity to NYC. I'm talking about thousands of coppers. Um, and I used to get sponsored by Skybank. Um, the first clients who called me, guess what, was, was um, the, the NYC from Abuja. Mm -hmm. uh, um, this, this guy called me on behalf of NYC and said, hey, your wife told us that you are gay. And you know what that means to Nigeria? That is not going to work well for your contract because wow. um, that is immoral. Um, that is against tradition. And, and so I had a choice, either to lie to him that mm -hmm. I wasn't, or to say, so I told him, I said, I'm not going to talk about it, but if you don't want me to continue with this contract, that's fine. Uh, and so that was it. That was the end of my contract. And everything began to go down for me, my business, everything started going down. Um, I started losing all my clients. And, mm -hmm. um, and she, she threatened to say, you either stay with me or you lose everything you have built over the years. And that was when the fights began. Oh, wow. But, but she'd already outed you. I, I know. But at <laughs> what? I mean, I guess she was hoping that, you know, he would 
quote unquote repent and say, Oh, we've prayed the gay away and um everything is fine now and he has found the Lord again. Uh, my question is uh another question I wanted to ask is now some people say that straight women should be fine with gay men marrying them without disclosing that they are gay simply because gay men are quote unquote endangered especially in nigeria what do you say about that i mean i remember this conversation came out um was discussed on twitter a couple of times as a part of the opinion that well but because gay men's lives are in danger in nigeria straight women should be able to accommodate them quote unquote protect them really protect them i hate the word accommodate like um accommodate them for what because they are um I think to protect them sounds good. Accommodate okay. them. Does it mean that the women have to stop living their own lives? Mm. Um, I I have nieces, I have sisters, I have friends who are women, and I'm I cannot sit here and see a niece of mine or a, a girlfriend of mine living a life that is below, you know, a potential just because she needed to accommodate. Again, I used the word accommodate a man. <laughs> What happens to your dream as a woman? What happens to you being who you are? What happens to you experiencing love? Uh, what happens to you being all that you want to be? Again, if a woman chooses to stay with a man who they know that they are gay or what have you, uh, it's up to the women. But I say, um, I tell my young ones, dream, dream big. Don't sit down just because you have to get married and you have to, to put up with it anything in the name of marriage uh i don't support that i think it's 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 very old school and um it's not helping anyone um do you also think that the the um, amount of pressure that's put on um nigerian women to get married um do you think that is uh, possibly why um more women are finding themselves in this position because I mean, from from you know your story, um, it seems as though your ex wife just felt like I need to get married. I need to get married, and she wanted to make this thing work with you at all costs, even though you were saying I am not living my truth. You know, you mentioned that there was the pressure of getting married, the pressure yeah. of now having babies and everything. So, do you think that the the amount of pressure that's put on Nigerian women to get married is part of this whole situation? It is honestly. Uh, but again, pressure can only happen if you allow it. Pressure can only happen if you allow it. Um, because uh, there was a time we all live in this world of passivity where we always just think everything happens because other people do it to us. And that's the same story I just told you about myself. I could go on and on and blame my wife and say, oh, she was the one that encouraged me. No, she didn't just encourage me. I accepted to be in that situation. So I can never blame her. I can never say, oh, you make me get married to you, even though you knew I was gay. No, I should decide. I should know that the pressure also was coming from me and I should be able to say no to that pressure. And that's why I blame myself. So I think to your question, we need to take responsibility as a society. First, the people who put pressure on us should take responsibility by saying, not all your children will get married. Not all your children, mother. Sorry, sorry, we, we, need, we need to pause because a Nigerian mom just fell to her chair as you said that. <laughs> she just fell over. Eh? Oh, my children will not get married. Hey, go for me, go for me. Oh, man. It's all right. That is, a, that is a culture we grew up in. But hey, the truth is, this is what, who get married. It's marriage is certificate that you need to really be all that you want to be alive. I don't think so. I believe in marriage. Don't get me wrong. I believe in marriage. I believe that people, if you find love, you should, you should be married. Uh, but if you don't, I don't think you should stop living your life. I don't think you should want to, to succumb to pressure from people to become, because at the end of the day, at this, so there is a wedding and there is a marriage. I'm sure you know this, this, this dichotomy of the wedding is where everybody attends and they, they celebrate and you have all the fashion paparazzi then the marriage is when everybody's left you they've gone and then you are all alone by yourself and with this person so you need to ask yourself after the after the wedding what happens to you what happens to the marriage so yeah it's a choice people can make a choice to stay on or they can make a choice to be all that they want to be and enjoy life is too short to live it you know sad and 
I just sit down in a place and just waiting for a man to come back home. What would you advise um, a man, a gay man who is in this situation right now? And what would you also advise a straight woman who is married to a gay man um, also in this situation right now? I would say, um, first of all, uh, stop the blame. Stop the blame game. Um, if, to the gay man, let me start with, with him. Uh, stop blaming yourself about your past. Stop blaming the choices you have made. You have made them. You have come this far, okay? We understand what the pressure has been. But you have an opportunity now to change your story. If you had just two more days to live, if you had just 10 more days to live, I would say, I would suggest to you that you should live your best life. You should live a life that you'll be proud of, that you'll be able to look in the mirror. You should live a life that you'll be able to have your phone, not hiding it from your wife. You should be able to live a life that you go to work, not afraid that somebody is going to out you to someone because you are living your, 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 your full life. And to mm -hmm. the straight women, uh, if you go online, for instance, where I wrote my story, you know that most of the people who attacked me they were mostly straight women <laughs> and they were like, you know, oh, you look at another man. We lost another man to gayness, all these gay people. I think women need to start uh, to, to really stop and, and think about this thing. Life is not all black and white and we cannot all just make all women just marry because everybody has to be like you. Um, I, I have a lot to say about women. I have a lot of respect for you and because I know what the society has also done to women over the years, over the centuries. So this could be all of that. But I would say if you're a straight woman in a marriage, um, you can talk about it. But you, you need to be honest with your life. Do you want to live? Um, life is not all about getting married. Okay, I've um so we, we've got a, we've got a question from um one of our um off air gang. Uh, they want to know what are the signs to look out for that can indicate that your partner, your husband, your wife may not be straight. Are there any signs? If they are very brilliant, they may be gay. <laughs> if they are very beautiful and handsome, they may be gay. <laughs> if they have two hands and two eyes, they may be gay. <laughs> Sam says, what do you think about contractual relationships with queer women as well? There is no standard for life for anyone. I don't believe anybody can tell anybody how to live their life, but I believe that anybody who puts other people in a situation that they did not consent to, um, that for me is where you cross the line. But if both of you agree, if both of you decided that you're gonna to be together as queer people, both women and men, I think that's not a lie. Um, it's, it's your decision, it's your choice, you made it. I would not do that uh, because um, I just can't, uh, keep telling people that that's my wife when I know she's my friend. Um, oh. For some people, they can, and that's fine. So I, I so again, it's it's a personal decision that people can make. No judgment. I think if there's one thing that I'm definitely going to take away from this, um, it's the fact that, um, like I said earlier, uh, there are a lot of women. I mean, I've heard stories. I I know people that know people that were in situations like this. But like I said before, the difference is that there was no truth. So seeing as you said you, you don't like the word honesty, I'm like, let's use truth. You know, so right from the beginning, you 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 kind of said that, um, you know what, I'm, I have certain feelings. I find myself being more attracted to men. Um, and it was a case of, OK, we're going to try and pray the gay away. Um, obviously, that didn't end up working for you. But if we're going to be very, very honest, and I'm sure Bimmy and I know, like a lot of people, we know, we know lots of interesting stories, um, but there are lots of people that are living, that are still living this life mm -hmm. in this country. Mm -hmm. Maybe they've even, maybe they've even, um, maybe for some women that are married, they've even maybe caught their partners in situations hmm. like this. Then we go back to the whole pressure. I can't leave. I can't, you know, and then they continue to do it. What will people say? What will people say? What will people say? So I know you've given advice to, you know, women um, that, or people that find themselves in that situation. Um, but I, I mean, what, what, what else can they do? Is it by force to be married? There's some, me, it's see, not by force. there's some people in, in Nigeria that literally getting married is the be all and end all. Hmm. 
it's a be all and end all. There's certain people that they feel that whatever, when I say certain people, mainly women, there's certain women that feel like whatever I have achieved in my life, if I don't have a Mrs. something, 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 all of those achievements are just there, Mm. you know? So is there anything else um, that they can do? And how would you also encourage, um, um, young queer people who might find themselves in the situation. I think the other day there was this story that was going around on social media where this, um, this, this uh, lady was talking to her mom about her sexuality and it was a very, very difficult, you know, conversation. So how would you um, encourage um, young queer people to live their truth? Uh, bear in mind, we still have the whole, everything's legal here, but how would you encourage them to live their truth? Jackpot. <laughs> Jaguar, right? <laughs> Leave the country. Actually, I don't think so. Um, be, mind you, before I left Nigeria, um, I was in a relationship with a man, and okay. uh, and we were living there. We we were helping a lot of young queer people. We were hosting um, kind of meetings to make people. Uh, we were trying to help. We were giving support system out. Mm-hmm. Myself and my then uh, boyfriend. Um, and I know that I speak with, as I speak with you, there's so many queer people and many straight people in Nigeria who are collaborating to create safe spaces. The mm-hmm. key word is safe space. Uh, like Benny and to yourself, both of you, I was talking to, um, I cannot remember her name, uh, Ziz, the lady who had been talking to me, uh, Awazi, uh, to, yeah. to come to this show. Uh, she has been so very, um, friendly. Um, and, and I'm not saying that you people are, uh, you know, uh, as uh, telling people go and be gay or go and be lesbian, but you have you have treated this conversation um, uh, with dignity. And I think uh, this is what is missing in the echo ecosystem in Nigeria. Uh, if the media can start treating uh, the conversation about sexuality with dignity and with research, you know, if they actually are, are reading, not just some people who just want to have clicks on their social media pages. You know, mm. you know, oh, the shades, the shades. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. shade. See a story from from a queer person because they need to get clicks. They just quickly put it up because yeah, they know is, Nigerians. Is, if there's anything Nigerians, and, and I'm not I'm not saying every Nigerian, a lot of religious um, uh, extremists. Uh, if there's anything they like to talk about, is the gay people are the problem of Nigeria. I mean, look at us. We have problem with our roads. We have problem with water. We have problem with light. We have problem with barely everything. And we are not coming together as one. We're not coming together as one to decide how we're going to move this country forward. The first problem you are having is the gay people. Come on now. <laughs> how did we become your problem? You know. So I would say that we need we need to create this safe space, and it starts with the media, the way our stories are being told. And I'm I'm not saying this because both of you are here but from the interaction i had with awazi i had to send a, a special message to her to say i am really very impressed that i got in i don't attend invitation from nigerian press uh but but th- from the way she treated me from beginning to now even the way both of you and i'm not saying you're treating me with key, uh, kiss gloves you're asking tough questions but 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 it's a question that are, these questions are informed you're not questioning about oh so who, who sleep with who how did you do it? Uh, do you think you are going to go to God is going to judge people you? People ask and you I, such I, questions? People ask for such questions from me in the past. Uh, so we need to educate ourselves. People need to read. Uh, people need to go. There's nothing new anymore that people cannot read about. And I say, Nigeria, are one of the, we are one of the highest subscribers to porn up. If you can, if you can watch pornography, I mean, you can also understand what it means for other people uh, to be different from you. So what causes us, what is making us uh, not to understand people? So safe space is what I would say for queer people left in Nigeria. Please mm-hmm. try to be safe. Um, you don't, you don't hold anybody any out in. You don't have to help yourself. You don't, mm-hmm. you don't hold anybody any story. I tell people that all the time. Mm-hmm. You, the most important person you need to help to is yourself. Mm-hmm. Because the day I realized in my marriage that I was wasting my time after I sent a lot of money to, to TBN, to Paula White, all of these people on TBN just asking God to, to pray this gate away. And the day I realized that I had a turning point, that nothing was ever going to change, was the day I set myself free from this slavery. Uh, people need to, to first set themselves free. When you are free, I think once you have set yourself free, you can, you can begin to know what to do next. 
uh, whether you need to stay or where you need to go. Um, earlier on, you said that when you started having issues in your marriage, um, your ex-wife was telling, you know, business partners and people um, that you had contracts with that you were gay and you ended up losing a lot of your business. So Richard says, what about the guys that, that are staying in the closet for work? Because what you, what you described there was scary. Like losing your business and everything. Um, and this speaks to how far we have come as a society. And unfortunately, this is also still happening in even the West, Western world. Uh, there are countries in the world where even the so-called uh, Western countries, where people are still afraid to come out, you know, to be safe at work for being queer. So I, I don't want us to always think this is just a Nigerian uh, problem because there's this issue with some of us. Yeah, we just always want to 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 to, to demonize Nigeria for everything. Uh, mm -hmm. Nigerian uh, Nigerians are some of the best people that have helped me in my coming out uh, process are Nigerians, and some of them are straight. In fact, most of them are straight women and men, um, and from different. So, how would say you should you should assess the space? You should look at the space where you are before you come out to anyone, and you don't know again. You don't know anybody your coming out story. No, it's, it's not a party. Uh, it is your life. Nobody has anything to say about it. You, you don't need to go and start telling people because Kenny is out. I need to. We need to be out. It's important. Uh, it's important for people coming behind us to know they are not alone. It's important for them to know that being gay is normal. There's nothing absolutely wrong with you. Uh, that takes a lot of work, a lot of courage. But if you know you're not in a space to do that, you don't owe anybody that. Take your time to find who you are first. Once you know yourself, every other thing begins to happen. Will you at any point come back or do you feel like your life is in danger if you even step foot here? I was in Nigeria <laughs> um, about two years ago. Um, I came to teach at Orange for about a, a weekend. Um, okay. I, I had to move from my house quickly to a hotel because um, I, I was hearing from a few friends around that I needed to quickly move away from the house. Um, I felt a little bit endangered, wow. um, not because, not because, uh, some people are just going to kill you, but because of the uninformed, this bigots, this, if you like, this ex extremist who believe they are doing God's work. They want to kill the sinner to help God. So I had to stay in a hotel that wasn't good because I had to spend extra money that I could have given to families or friends mm -hmm. uh, in a hotel. So that kind of, that kind of fear. Um, is warranted. But again, like I say, what about those who cannot leave Nigeria? People are living their life. There, there's so many, there's so many queer advocates in Nigeria. Um, so you had one on your show about a year ago or so. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I just want to, I just want to, to give a shout out to all of these people in Nigeria who, who are staying despite all of that's happening. They are living their truth uh, and they're, they're there. They're queer, they're there and they're doing the work. And those are the heroes for me, not the people like myself who have the opportunity to, to get out. Uh, the people who stay on, who soldiers on. For me, these are the people that we need to give all the credit to. I, I have I have a question. Um, so uh, as you were talking about your journey, um, you did also mention that you were, you know, quite high up in the church. You were a deacon. You mentioned different churches that you attended. What is your current relationship with um should i say religion or churches what what's your current relationship um or your thoughts about churches and religion uh pandora box you were just about to open really <laughs> <laughs> i was hoping that this question was not going to come up but yeah um mm -hmm. i would say that i have evolved i have evolved um maybe i've evolved in three stages the first stage was when i was very religious um and when i was a pentecostal this Holy Ghost boy, uh, choir leader, um, everything church, you know, I used to preach to people. I used to cast out demons. I used to lead fellowships all across Nigeria. Um, and then I moved from there to the part where I began to see that some of the scriptures that we, that we preached, I preached myself too. Uh, they were written by people, uh, who have moved on, who have moved on. Uh, from those those kind of tenets, those kind of belief systems. We're talking about Western countries that gave us King James Bible. King James himself was a gay man. Uh, uh, the King, I mean, it is a documented history. I'm not making this up. Go and go and look look out for it. Uh, and so this is a King James Bible that a Nigerian Christian we quote uh, to you and say you're going to hell. But this same guy who preserved the Bible 
when there was a, a fire in England, and this same guy was a queer man who actually, you know, had, you know, relationship with men. What I'm trying to say is that over the years, I moved, I evolved, and, you know, from being too overtly religious to actually start considering um, looking at life from different point of view. And I think that is the place where I think, I'm not sure, that Nigeria is getting into right now. Uh, if you look at the last um, uh, NSAS, um, 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 if you like, protest, there were a lot of people that came together from different religious groups uh, to fight. And for me, that is a Nigeria that I belong to, where it doesn't matter what you believe. It doesn't matter your church or your Muslim or Christian. You believe in human rights. And I repeat the word human right. I think in me believing in dignity of myself as a person was what set me free from being overtly religious. So my second stage was when I began to look at myself as human. The first stage was when I just saw myself as just a spirit, man. Everything was about spirit. Somebody is a witch. Uh, my, my, my fathers, otherwise, they were witches. They were the one behind my misfortunes. You know, everybody's always praying on social media, all the enemies, all the enemies. I bind you in Jesus' name. That is a stage. Some people are still in that stage. Everything they see around them is spiritual. But when you move from that stage to the stage of enlightenment, when you begin to look at people as humans that have rights and dignity, and you treat women right, you treat children right, you begin to see that religion actually can be a good thing and it also can be a bad thing. So right now, the third state I am in, I am a non-believer. I don't go to church anymore. Um, I think religion has done more harm to us as Africans uh, than good. It kind of came to imprison many of us, to enslave us again. Uh, and I think it was another tool in the end of colonial masters or what you like, mistresses, uh, to keep us, you know, being enslaved. Because how can you tell a country like ours of millions of scientists and professors, we're still living in the dark of, 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 of Nepa, if you like. Um, look at us, look at internet. Uh, today, many times we stop talking because of internet. Um, what is going on with us? But in every building there is a church. So I don't blame the church. I don't, but I think we need to begin to move to enlightenment. We need to begin to enlighten ourselves. And maybe people like Bimi and Tubes will be some of those advocates uh, who would help us, you know, by doing this kind of program where people can begin to get enlightened about life, seeing life from a you know, different point of view, not just from the Bible uh, alone. People should read books, read everything, not just the Bible. That is the stage where I am. So those are the three stages that I've been through as a believer. Thank you. I think it's at this point that we should say thank you. Yes. And round up this conversation. You've been more than um, wonderful um, answering our questions, telling your story. And um, I hope that someone listening um, will, I guess, feel encouraged and yeah. not feel so alone, you know? Mm. Yeah, th this is this has definitely been a very very um, enlightening conversation. Um, I've I've definitely learnt you know quite a bit, and um, I I hope this episode I hope it does help somebody you know get closer to living you know their truth. And um, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for for being so kind to um, accept our invitation. First of all, um, thank you for answering questions without any malice and without telling us to shut up and go away or something. <laughs> we really, really do appreciate it, and we wish you the best of luck with everything. I really enjoy speaking with you. I wish you the best in life. Uh, I'll see you very soon. Thank you. Hopefully okay. soon. Thank you. I am very, well, we are very, very excited to introduce our next guest on the show. He's one of my favorite artists, Joe Boy. Joe Boy, thank you for having me, guys. I thought you were saying, guys, sorry. Thank you for having me. I thought you were saying, hey, thank you. Something, I don't know. Joe Boy's a bit nervous. I know, yeah, he's worried. Because, he's scared about what we're going to ask him. Exactly. What's your phone? I, I was going to say. My fear. What's your phone? What's your phone? My phone, my phone is not here. Where is it? Outside. Manager, bring his phone now. <laughs> outside, we, have, we have this thing on the show where we go into your DMs. I don't oh, use no. phones actually. Like, it's just where's your phone? Wow. It's yes, just it's signed out. Of it. yeah. Yeah. You sign up. I don't use social media actually. I don't understand. Wait, I don't what have you done? Phone. Who are you hiding from? No, I just like to like focus on on real life yeah. stuff. You know. Yeah. So yeah. I, no, I'm not on the street. Ah. <laughs> I'm, I'm in my house. <laughs> we have never been in the <laughs> <laughs> Wow, this is, <laughs> this is a setup. 
It's not it's it's set up already. No, no, like, no, no. We're just like, we're like no, seconds no, into this no, interview. See, bro, I'm already being set up. I feel attacked already. Why are you feeling attacked? 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 Why are you you, you, you did fierce, mom. We're lovely. I'm are we scary? I'm calm. No. Okay. So how cool. are you doing? I'm great. <laughs> I I'm really, excited. really, really like your songs. Thank um, you. You're very talented. Thank you so much. Um, so how has 2021 been for you? It's been beautiful. I think it's, it's been the biggest... Year for you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. For my career so far. That's good. Um, Dropped my first debut album. Mm-hmm. A um, couple of months later, you know, like six months after I dropped like a smash, a smash record, mm-hmm. alcohol, it's been mm-hmm. doing amazing well. It's going to be bigger than this actually, but Amen. thank God for, mm-hmm. amen, thank God for where we are and where we are going. Okay. Yeah. How do you feel about people pouring stuff on themselves? I know I you already like tweeted, it. I saw I like two or like three tweets about you begging people, yes, I enjoy, I like that you enjoy the yeah. song, but please stop pouring stuff. Where did that pouring Who stuff come on yourself? Who started this? Who started the like, challenge? The only video I posted on TikTok was just me holding a bottle, mm-hmm. an almost empty bottle of alcohol, mm-hmm. and just vibing like calmly. You didn't pour it on yourself. I did not pour it on myself. So who started it? Where did it start from? I think I think there was one particular um, TikToker. TikToker exactly, and hers wasn't so bad. I wasn't mad at that at all. Like she was like, pour, just point. I think it was water or wine or something on herself. That wasn't so bad. It wasn't so like off the edge. Then people decided to. You know, do things like bleach and yeah, carry. And what's what's the craziest one you've seen? Uh, I saw somebody pouring sand and actually putting it in the mouth. Oh, yeah, that that was that was one. I was like, sand from which beach? I think it was like she was like at the back of her house or something. And that I was hope you mad. know, you know that Nigerian men pee everywhere that That's is peeable. So, so somebody's pee has entered your mouth. Really so. <laughs> okay, but what is it like? For you, a young successful artist, you live in Lagos, right? Yeah. Okay. Um. Um. So how how do as in how do you handle the attention, especially from female fans? Ah, I try to take things easy and I make sure I don't get involved with people that have nothing to lose. Oh, so that's why you are no. dealing with all that woman. No, so apart that from that, case... like, 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 it's I think it's very very easy. easy you should always tell me like, Mister Easy, you should always tell me that. Don't get involved with somebody that has something that has nothing to lose. Like oh. they're going to get in trouble. Yeah, oh. that's true. Yeah. So like that's imagine imagine true. like I'm at a bar or something, like I'm, I'm at an event. Mm-hmm. There's one thing I always do. I try to like put you on camera. Like it's a test, I'll put you on camera. Like and if she does this, like no, no, no. That means we are good. Mm-hmm. As opposed to somebody that's like <laughs> Yeah. Like, 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 okay. So if you if if there are any artists listening. If you Such do that interest. test and she's like, yeah. <laughs> dead, dead, dead. Yeah, yeah, but what yeah, if she's that, someone that, that is used to the limelight though? Hmm? She, what yeah. if she's someone that she's used, she's popular? I would rather not be somebody that is popular. Yeah. So that means no fellow female artist then. At all, never. You Who's never the... looked at one female artist and be like, ah, she's gonna go bad though. No, I'm like, like yeah, like if I see somebody be like, ah, she's really pretty. Like she's who? Very fine. A lot. Like who? A lot lot who is your Who is your ultimate celebrity crush? Has to be Tiwa Savage. Yeah. Okay. Like, Savage. From time, like if she looks at me, I'll blush. could be your new sugar mommy. I will blush. I can't even like. like... Should be, should be your new sugar mommy. <laughs> should we call her? Huh? I'd be like, Joe boy wants to say hi. <laughs> we should call her. Ah. Next episode. So no, no, wait, now, wait, now, wait, now. Once I will call her, I'd be like, who? <laughs> <laughs> Cut off my phone. <laughs> but you know, you like you like all the ladies, right? Yeah, I'm um, um, attracted to Yeah. Older, so she's... Older. Don't be shy. Only yeah, I'm so, saying that. I'm saying that. She's, yeah. she's got plenty of sugar. Uh, okay. See, so yeah, the good thing is... Uh, so that's what is sugar? No, mommy. No, the listen. Money. The good oh, thing... Yes. Oh, that Wait, no. The good thing is that when you are dealing with people that, one, have something to lose and they're older... You won't be sending them money for things like Uber, hair, yeah, exactly. or you know, Why buy me iPhone. Yeah, no, and you won't be getting like singlet and boxes for your birthday. Yeah, you know? You probably get like you know. Yeah. 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 I don't know about Benji. Hey, yeah. 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 is, <laughs> is that the level of your sugar? Hence, that level. Like, if you were, if you were, <laughs> top level. Wait, if somebody like, if somebody like freaking designing with your sugar mommy, mm. standard Benji, standard. Yeah. Like. 
He you said yeah, it's like, but not that old. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> So tell us what has been your craziest fan experience? Ah, it's very beautiful story. Abuja. Beautiful, he said. Abuja. So I was performing at the club. The club is like on the ground, it's below the hotel. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say the names. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's below the hotel. So I'm performing at the, like I'm at the club now, like at the VIP side. This guy comes up with his girlfriend. He's like, yo, me and my girlfriend, she's a big fan. Okay. Say hi, we take pictures and stuff. And he comes to tell me, yeah, I beg news to my baby, she like to die. Oh dear! I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, bro, I got you. No, <laughs> like, bro. for real, I was like, bro, I got you. Like, because me, like, if I see somebody is like Involved. somebody is in a relationship, I don't like try to interfere or anything. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. enjoy yourself. Yeah, so she's taking pictures. Fine. Then next is trying to rock. I'm like, auntie, your boyfriend is right there. Like, don't do that. So I kind of like move away. So just giving you bum bum. Basically, yeah. So done with the show now. I go upstairs to my room. Somebody knocks. Eh. Oh. Unfortunately, the room doesn't have like a see through. Which like, guy would tell me this? Exactly. Unfortunately. And the way she knocks, she knocked like my manager at that point. So I was like, ah, it's definitely this person. So I opened the door. Eh. And next thing I saw in a nightdress. Oh. Real life. Like I said in a nightdress. Ooh. I'm like, okay. What are you looking for? She says she's looking for her friend. And next thing she just Enters. slides into the room. Imitia boy, I just stepped out of the room that ah. I rather sleep outside. Like you not put me in trouble. She said I must kiss her. Uh, she's not going to leave the room. <laughs> I'm like, okay, you are going to stay in this room. I'm going to stay outside. And I started calling, calling, calling. And a friend was actually watching for her at the end of the lobby, at the end of like the hallway, oh, yeah. in case her boyfriend was coming up. Ah. Wow. So what? How did the Thankfully, the boyfriend came up, was coming up. I'm like, ah, your boyfriend is coming. So she ran out. I like, thank God. And I just locked the door. But she was like, so like this went on for like ten minutes. So like she's not going to leave until I kiss her. That was smart that you ran out of the room. Yeah, I ran. That story, that story she entered, seems, I ran out. Shit. That story seems a bit, I don't know, because I feel like the boyfriend was coming, but he was in night dress too. <laughs> <laughs> because, no, <laughs> my friend, my <laughs> I think they wanted to have like a little situation with you. Definitely. Because for it's the def- guy to say, this is my girl, but don't steal her. And then yeah. he now is there and she's there like giving you booty and everything. Yeah, he's a pretty bad guy. If he had found out, I feel he would have attacked me or something. So Well he was the one that brought his he, he brought the, the, the food to the lion's den. Yeah, he was mm-hmm. definitely trying to impress his Yeah, yeah, trying to impress his Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. What was he? At what? <laughs> <laughs> At what? Stay home with big body bands. Hey. 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 At what point? <laughs> now, nah, wow. Yeah. The last part is just this DM speak. Come, sign it to his phone. Now, what's this? Ah, uh, you, you probably not see anything because I don't follow it up. I just delete it. So. Yeah. If I see any funny thing, I just swipe, swipe, swipe. Wow. Yeah. So, so, all the that I so you didn't see the message I sent to you. You didn't send me any message. (laughs) 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 All right, thank you so so much for stopping by, Joe Boy. This has been interesting. It it wasn't as bad. I know. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't say that already. That. I think I handled it well because yeah. so far so good. I was so scared of being me that I don't know. What? Why me? <laughs> you know, me? Why me? I listen to your radio. And? And yes. Mm. And what I do? Okay, I well, okay be... name one thing that you just like, ah, be me. That you've heard me say. I know, I, I, I figured you like putting people on your seat a lot. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Wow. yeah. It's yeah. fun. It's fun, to, <laughs> it's, fun, it's fun to listen to, but it's, it's, not, it's, a, it's not fun to be in that position. All the time, you know. So no, before so. you leave, you need to tell us about this, your upcoming show. Okay. Yeah, uh, so I have a show December 15th, my first headline show in Lagos. Okay. I'm super excited about it. Wow. You guys should pull up. Um, is at Balmoral Federal Palace. Very, very affordable. I made sure of that. Okay. Very, 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 very affordable. You know, it's a kid. Hmm? For regulars, you can get as low as 5K. Okay. Yeah, 5K. And if you are late to the party, 10K. Yeah, but there's VVVVVIP. Of course, mm-hmm. now there are tables. There are tables mm-hmm. for... Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, me, I, want, I want to be on this. I want to sit on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Yeah, that's what I'm No saying. problem. Yeah. V, 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 super VIP. No, I had her. Mm. Okay. No, I <laughs> no, <laughs> All right, thank you so much for stopping by. Best me. of luck with everything. That was a fun conversation with Joe Boy. Um, I didn't expect him to be so shy, but it's all good. <laughs> uh, thank you to our guest, Kenny, as well as Joe Boy. And thank you to our audience for watching you. Yes. Thank you. Make sure make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel like us um and share with your friends and everything and come back next week yeah all right 
Here is Joe Boy closing out this episode with his performance of his single Sip. Can I pour you? Can I pour you? No, no, no. Let's not play. Uh-huh. Thank you for watching, guys. Mwah. Bye. Yeah, 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 yeah. We now go far. We are go go. We go in. You go know uh, all of the blessings fall in my yard. Blessings stay from my yard. Uh, uh, and like a dance, you go be, you go see, you go feel uh, because the blessings fall in my yard. Blessings stay from my yard. Oh, that's why I sip. I don't wanna raise my bad things no more. I don't wanna go back to where they before. Make nobody stress me, no disturb me, ja, ja, ja. I sip my alcohol. I don't wanna raise my bad things no more. I don't wanna go back to where they before. Make nobody stress me, no disturb me, ja, ja, ja. Hey, baby, baby. Hey, baby, baby. Hey, baby, baby. Oh, no, no. <laughs> too many distractions, too many problems. I feel no run away, but now we could solve them. Too many bad men, and not enough friends. Lord save me, don't wanna lose my conscience. I just wanna dance on the sunset. Make nobody stop my enjoyment. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no. That's why I see. I don't wanna reason bad things. I don't wanna go back to where I did before. Make nobody stress me, no disturb me, ja, ja, ja. I sip my alcohol. I don't wanna reason bad things no more. I don't wanna go back to where I did before. Make nobody stress me, no disturb me, ja, ja, ja. Hey, baby, baby. Hey, baby, baby. Ooh, 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 ooh.